Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Henry's Law and Rayold's Law. And this is a way of uh, dealing with solutions of, say, A and B. And we're going to stick just to binary mixtures here. Uh, so we, if we have a liquid solution with mole fraction A and mole fraction B, and then we put this in a sealed container, so let's imagine this is a sealed container, then there's going to be some vapor above this container, and there'll be a partial pressure due to A and a partial pressure due to B. And so what Henry's Law and Rayolt's Law do, uh, they give us a way to get the partial pressure from the mole fraction and vice versa. So let's just look at two uh, limiting cases. One is the basis for Henry's Law, and the other is the basis for Rayolt's Law. So the Henry's Law limit is something called the infinitely dilute limit. And so if we're thinking about some generic molecule A, then all surrounding A is B. So basically this is in a situation where we're very, very low mole fraction. We're taking the limit of zero mole fraction A, mole fraction one B. And then uh, the other limit is the pure case. So this is where we're at mole fraction, the limit as the mole fraction goes to one of A. And so here we're looking at, uh, if we have a generic molecule A, then all the other molecules around it are A. All right, well, what are, what are these two laws then? As we move away from, say, the pure state, let's look at Henry Rayle's laws first. So we move away from the pure state. So certainly when we're in the pure state, then the only pressure component up here is going to be A, and that's called the vapor pressure. So if we have just a pure substance sealed in a container, then the pressure above that is uh, the vapor pressure of the pure state. Well, as we start adding B, it, it stands to reason that the pressure due to A will start to drop, and there'll be some pressure due to B. And so how that drops is for the Rayolt's Law, it's purely a statistical uh, law based on um, how much A is around. So it is, it's completely ignoring the interaction difference between A with A and A with B. It's as if it, it doesn't care. And so the law for Rayolt's Law is that the partial pressure will be proportional to the vapor pressure of the pure state. So this is the vapor pressure of the pure substance times its mole fraction. So if it's 70% I, or A in this case, uh, A in, for example, then it, the partial pressure would be 70% of its vapor pressure. So that's Rayolt's law. Henry's law, a little different. Henry's law, so the nice thing about Rayolt's law is that only, the only thing in the formula is A. It doesn't care about what the other partner uh, is. Henry's law is different. Henry's law, here we're A alone, and then we're gonna start to build up A. So we're going to increase the um, mole fraction. And then it does matter, of course, what B is. And so uh, we get, again, a linear proportionality. But the constant of proportionality here is something called the Henry's Law constant. So, and I'm working here in um, mole fraction. You'll, you might see, if you Google Henry's Law constant, you'll probably get it for molality or molarity. Um, there's a, a lot of ways that it might show up. But the point, the main point is that it depends on both the solute and the solvent. So you can't look up the Henry's Law constant for water, say. You look up the Henry's Law constant for water in methanol or something like that. So it requires both components. Now, uh, here too, if it was, say, 10% A, then the partial pressure would be uh, 0.1 times the Henry's Law constant. Now, look at what would happen here if we take this all the way to 1, then the Henry's Law constant would represent the pure um, vapor pressure. Now, this, these will all only be true, these will only hold under the conditions of an ideal solution. 
So in an ideal solution, the Henry's law constant is equal to the vapor pressure. And so this will follow both Rayot's law and Henry's law through all mole fractions. So let's make a little graph of that. This is a very typical picture here. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1 mole fraction in A. Well, as A goes up, B goes down. So here, this side is pure B, and this side is pure A. And so this is 0 mole fraction B, and one a mole fraction of 1 of um, B over here on this side. So let's draw the Henry's Law line. I'm going to put the or sorry, the Rayleigh's law line, I'm going to put the vapor pressure over here. This is pure A, and so it's got some vapor pressure. And it's just going to be a linear function. That's what this dashed line is, uh, representing the partial pressure at any given mole fraction. Likewise, B, B is pure over on this side, so here's the vapor pressure, and uh, it follows B. Now, down here, the slope of this line is K, a, and the slope of this line is KB. So it's also following Henry's law. And then the total pressure is just the sum of these two, which is a straight line connecting the vapor pressures. And so this is what's called an ideal solution. Ideal meaning that, uh, unlike an ideal gas where the particles don't feel each other, what we're saying here is uh, there is interaction, but the interaction is completely the same between A with A and A with B and B with B. It doesn't matter what the interaction is with. That's called an ideal solution. Now, no real solution is ideal, uh, but some are very close to that. I think uh, benzene and toluene is, a good, is a, an example that's often used for something that's almost an ideal solution. But certainly things like water and propanol or something like that would be very much uh, not ideal. All right, so let's look at this non-ideal case. And in this case, the Henry's Law constant does not equal the vapor pressure. And so we'll look at case one, where we have what's called a negative deviation from Rayot's Law, and then hence a positive deviation from Henry's Law. So the graph gets a little bit, um, a little bit uh, complicated here. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to redraw this graph and we'll follow the lines here over on this blank spot. So I've got my mole fraction that is going from 0 to 1 and my mole fraction of B, which is going from 0 to 1 in the other direction. I'm going to put on here PA. So this pure A, I'm going to put on PA. P, B, so that's these two points. And now I'm going to sketch in Henry's Law, or Rayleigh's Law, sorry, Rayleigh's Law, that's connecting a straight line 0 to the vapor pressure. So that's how we sketch in Rayleigh's Law. Now we're saying we have a ne negative deviation, so that means I'm going to follow Rayleigh's Law. I have to, I have to follow Rayleigh's Law at um, up near the, the the pure state, but then I deviate in a negative direction, and then I come in here with a slope that is less than the slope of this line. Well, what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is the Henry's Law. So Henry's Law Ka over here. And so we have a positive deviation, see so a positive deviation from Henry's Law, and a negative deviation from Rayleigh's Law. And so that's what's going on here. That's, that's this line here, these two. Then I do the same thing for B. And you're going to have a negative deviation for B uh, because, uh, well, we'll talk about that in just a bit. And then the total pressure will be a negative deviation from uh, the ideal case. Okay, so what can we interpret from a deviation from Rayleigh's Law? If the deviation is negative, that means the partial pressure is less than less than what we expect from this purely statistical Rayleigh's Law. So Rayleigh's Law is saying we don't care what the interaction is, in which case we would be, we would at any given mole fraction, say mole fraction right here, we would have a partial pressure A here. But we have actually less. 
So there's less A up here than expected. So that means there's more A in solution. It's harder to get A out than a purely statistical case. So that means the interaction between A and B is stronger than the interaction between A and A and B and B. So the hetero, the hetero interaction A with B stronger than the homo interactions A with A and B with B. And we see here that that will result in a Henry's law constant being less than uh, the vapor pressure. All right, well, let's look at the second case. Uh, second case is where we have positive deviation from Rayleigh's law, negative deviation from Henry's law. So the exact opposite of this case. So let's follow again. Um, maybe I'll, well, I think we can follow now that I've done this once. So I'm going to plot in my A, and then I'm going to sketch in, that's this line right here, sketching in the Rayleigh's law. I have a, de a negative deviation. So I have to follow Rayleigh's law, at least initially. So you always follow Rayleigh's law as you come into the pure substance. But then we deviate high, and I come into zero here at a different slope. And then I follow this slope all the way out. This line is the Henry's law line. So I have a negative deviation from Henry's law. Likewise over here for B. And so in that case, our partial pressure is greater than we expect. So but the, the act of adding B forces out a little more A than uh, would be expected. And conversely, forces out a little more B than would be expected. So we have a positive deviation in both cases. This means that the hetero interaction um, is, oh, sorry, is weaker. So it's stronger over here, weaker here. It's, there's more of a tendency to come out into the vapor above the fluid. And so we have a weaker interaction than the homo interaction. So the A with A is a better, more stable case than A with B. So a, both A and B come out into solution more than what would be anticipated from purely a statistical reason. All right, uh, so this is Henry's Law, this is Rayleigh's Law. Uh, your book, will, it depends on what book you have, it'll go in, most books will talk about this to some degree, probably very uh, sparse. Uh, we won't have any real homework on this. Uh, I might have a few questions in the notes, but uh, this is one way. The big story here is um, there's, well, I guess to summarize, the big story is there's a relationship between the partial pressures above a solution and the mole fraction of that, that liquid solution. And we can describe that based on two limiting cases. And then if we deviate from those cases, as in a non-ideal solution, that gives us some inter information about the intermolecular interactions, which is pretty interesting. And so uh, just try to tell yourself the story of this. Try to convince yourself that this is true. Practice drawing. Uh, start with a blank sheet of paper. Practice drawing a couple different cases here. All right.